call this place seven menus. I really like this place, Ruth. I thought you would. There's only one menu. Interesting decor. Jack introduced me. I like to think of this as a higher order of coffee shop, a sort of a, a transcendental diner. Well, it's the first place I've seen that says substitutions welcome. Shouldn't we ask for the other six? The other six what? The other six menus. Paul. Huh? What, what happened? happened? I knew they were going to say that. What happens, Paul? I knew you two were going to say that. We always know exactly what we're going to say. That's the best part. It is? Well, part of the best part. The other part we'll save for later. Oh, cool and lovebird. We have health regulations to watch out for here. I don't get it. Are you still searching for the lost menu? Yeah. Why seven menus if there's only one? Maybe it's a translation. Whatever happened to truth in advertising? Maybe seven menus is Chinese for happiness or something. But this place isn't Chinese. I can't tell what it is. People <laughs> we'll say about you someday, you know. About me? You're an advertising, aren't you? I am indeed. Well, they'll say, whatever happened to Ruth in advertising? Ouch, ouch. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Who owns this place anyway? Greeks. Oh, of course. course. The Greeks own all the restaurants everywhere. After defending tragedy, all that was left was food services. <laughs> this is all going too fast for me. Well, who wants what? Let's order. Will you look at that menu? Cajun kielbasa, char siu with bean sprouts. And Billy Holiday on the jukebox. <laughs> What's the joya de la chasse? You got me. Um, joy of the chase? Crown of the chase, wild fowl stuff with venison. How would you know that? I don't know, doesn't everyone know that? I didn't know that. She must have had it with some other guy, Jack. I guess so. Well, I think I'm going to have a salad. Pastrami on rice for me. I want just this one digit. Finger food, huh? You know what I've got a taste for? French toast. For supper? Actually, it's the syrup. What I really want is some sugar. Well, it's a change anyways. Only there's no French toast on the menu. Well, this will order another menu. Where are the other menus? Do you know, all the time while me and Paul were dating, no matter what time of day it was, all you would ever order is meatloaf with gravy, mashed potatoes, and peas, no matter what time of day it was, morning, noon, or night. Uh, so Paul was a real meatloaf and potatoes kind of guy. No, all he wants is sugar. It's a sad change. It's all it coming. Well, anyways, he would get it, and then he'd stir in the mashed potatoes with the peas and mix in the gravy, and then sort of beat the meatloaf into submission. And then he'd mix this whole thing around on his plate until it was practically soup. And then he used a tablespoon to eat this goo. Does his therapist know about this? <laughs> I believe you married a guy who did things like that, Hazel. Sick, baby. What about waffles? Do you think they have waffles at this place? They have everything at this place. Everything but what I want. So when do you guys leave for the cake? Oh, Saturday morning. Fin sharp. That sure raised you out of use usual lethargy. You, yeah, you two should come up and see the house. I'd be out class. We can test the undertow. Oh, Ruth, you know, I saw Scott when I was up in Providence. Oh, you did? Well, should I leave the table? Oh, sit down. Did you talk to him? Are you kidding? I gave him hell. No. Well, not really. No, I think I would leave the table. Well, sit down. I said that Ruth had hooked up with this terrific guy named Jack, yeah, um, and that she was very happy. This is excruciating. And then he, i.e. Scott, was past, past, past. Imperfect. Uh, did you say a terrific but penniless guy named Jack? No, I just said terrific. Don't worry, honey, I get you. I don't know why you should find this excruciating. Uh, because that could be me someday. People sitting around the table and calling me a jerk. <laughs> and me without the girl. Well, he was a jerk. Oh, it just reminds you a little the transients of love. Love? Transients? You know what I studied in college, don't you? I'm afraid to ask. Romance languishes. Ooh. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> What did he say when you talked to him? Nothing. He just looked at me. And you know, you just see it. Now I am leaving the table. Oh, sit down. We're all adults here. We you are? are? Yep. As a matter of fact, kids, this is adult life. Everybody's got three bank accounts on a house in the country. I don't have a house in the country. But you will have a house in the country. No, money isn't everything, you know. It isn't? No, it's not. Thank God. <laughs> Does anybody else want waffles? Oh, true love. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> Close on at the end of this week. Terrific. Did you get the price you wanted? Better than we wanted. Wow, it must be wonderful being with somebody who deals in zillions all day. Parts of zillions, anyway. Hang Parts of a zillion goes a long way. Hang out with someone in high financial wealth, Hazel, you'll learn how little you know about the world. So, uh, how come they call this place 
seven menus. Ah, there's only one menu here. It's part of this place is mystique. Hegel wrestled with that question for years. So did Kierkegaard. H Hegel what? Hasn't Ruth brought you in here before, Barry? No, uh, but I've heard so much about this place, I feel like a regular. Well, we've been coming in here with Ruth and, well, with Ruth for a long time. Well, I'm sure hungry. I'm starving. So what is everybody gonna get? I want something with some sugar. I feel like having something different. What's good on this menu? The other six menus. So what do I do with this menu? Order, Order another, another menu. menu. What? Order another menu when the waiter comes. I went through this once myself, Barry. It's an ancient routine. <laughs> do you know we had a guy come into our office this past week with a suitcase full of money? Into your office? Yeah, just came in there with a suitcase full of dough. Fifties and hundreds just laying there loose. Marches in, opens the case, shows the receptionist. Well, did she offer marriage? No, she called me down there. Did you offer marriage? <laughs> Listen to this, it's incredible. So he shows us all this money. There must have been fifty, sixty thousand dollars in this briefcase. I thought you, it was a suitcase. No, it was a leather briefcase. Oh, I thought you said suitcase. There's a lot of a difference between a briefcase and a suitcase full of money. Several years in prison, I think. <laughs> anyway, he wanted us to do something with all the money. Comes in off the street and just wanted us to do something. With all this money, he, he didn't even know what. So, what did you do? Are you kidding? Kick his ass back out into the street. That seems like a peculiar thing to do to somebody with a briefcase full of money. Who knows where he got all that dough? Could have been drugs, uh, embezzlement. Who knows? I presume if somebody comes in with a briefcase or even a suitcase full of happiness, you just grab it and run. No such luck, Hazel. Money is never just money. But isn't that incredible? Yeah. That settles it. What? A hot fudge sundae. I'm glad you're still concentrating on the essentials. <laughs> Guess it's that time, huh? I think I'll try the meatloaf. Oh, <laughs> meatloaf or? What's so funny? <laughs> Just don't mix the meatloaf in with the vegetables. Why not? Look what happened to us. Just a private joke there. Paul used to use it as sort of mating dance before they got married. Oh. So there's your warning, hon. Maybe I'd better order a breast of chicken and play it safe. Well, I'm going to try the Welsh rarebit. Hot fudge for me. I'm going to do the whole hog and get the turkey dinner. Actually, speaking of such things. Turkeys? Mating dances. What? Should we tell them? You mean now? Why not? Wake up, Paul. What's going on? I think something's on the way. You or me? Ruth and I are going to get married. Oh, oh hooray! That's terrific, you guys. <laughs> Thank Thank you. You. Congratulations. Thank you. Really terrific. Thank you. I've seen this coming for minutes, months. Uh, what's the date? We don't know yet. I say the sooner the better. So it doesn't interfere with all these deals. Well, hell, it's just a marriage. I say run down the road and Shanghai the first JP you can find. My mother is hysterical. Of course. <laughs> Well, I say here's to it. Raise your glasses, everyone. My glass is kind of dirty. Raise it anyways. To marriage and all the rest of it. To, to marriage. marriage. Anyway, I was thinking after the wedding, Don and I could do a week at the Cape, then a week just driving around, and maybe a couple of weeks in Florida with her parents and get in some scuba diving. You really shake up all out of his usual lethargy, Dawn. I guess I'm just an activity-oriented person by nature. You used to be practically comatose till you came along. Hey, Paula, what happened, uh, huh? What happened? You know what all that lethargy was, though, right? What was that? It was all that sugar. That's why Paul's always been so low energy. It was a sugar OD. Yeah, now I'm off sugar. I'm a dynamo. You <laughs> sure look trim. Do I look trim? I didn't know you could scuba dive. Huh? Said, I didn't know you could scuba dive. Don's going to teach me. I love scuba diving. I've been doing it since well, God, since I was about ten. You still use the house on the cape? What, me? Yeah, I thought. Oh no, Hazel and I split it up. Half a month each. That's a fair arrangement. Yeah, it all works out okay. That's very equitable. It's the least she could do, you know. I beg pardon? Well, she and Paul bought the house together 50-50. You don't want him to just sell it, right? Hmm. Anyway, you two guys will have to come up for a weekend. There's an idea. We'll test the water. Get a change of air. Or you two could come up to our place. Oh, you have a house too? Oh, they've got a real country house. In the mountains. I love the mountains. Southern Vermont. I love Vermont. Do you like to ski? She loves to ski. I <laughs> love to ski. 
Hey. What? Something wrong? What's the matter? N nothing. Nothing. Uh, it must have been something I ate. Not enough sugar or something. Well, maybe you put the goddamn book down. You know what I'm going to have? You don't even have to tell me. Meatloaf and potatoes and gravy. I knew it! With peas. I knew it. Every time we go out night or day, all he ever orders is meatloaf and potatoes and peas. And then he mashes the meatloaf on the plate and stirs the peas and the potatoes and stirs it all around? How did you know that? Formally intuition. Maybe you'll get a quarter of a house on the cake. What, what's she talking about? Just a private joke. A quarter of the house. What do you do for a living, Don? Oh, I'm a food therapist. A food therapist? Yeah, so I treat things like obesity and anorexia, you know, things like that. Sounds fascinating. I think it's a fantastic way to find out what makes people tick. Or birth, I suppose. You should hear some of her stories. 